we're going to be doing a couple of different things uh, in demonstrations. I'm going to share with you how to do basket weaving, not the actual basket weaving, but how to paint the weave of a basket. And also how to stroke large flower petals because it's different from um, our one stroke double loading and doing our wiggles and all those things. And I'm going to explain all of that to you as I do the demonstration. Okay, so let's get overhead and we will get going with this. Okay, there we go. All right, so let me get my plate here. And we're hearing from our friends in Canada also that they are eliminating the use of all foam plates up there, foam type of um, serveware and other things um, to be more conservative. And so if you're in Canada, you might want to start investing in a double loader if you don't already have one. Okay. All right. So let's get some colors out here. I am going to put out some yellow ochre and some coffee latte. We're going to do a brown basket today. Baskets can come in all kinds of colors, um, grays, browns, you name it, or you even pick you know, bright colors, that's fine. Um, so I put out some burnt umber. I'm going to get some wicker white here too. And some burnt sienna. Okay. Um, but basic woven raw um, natural looking baskets are usually done in brown tones or gray tones. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take a, I don't want a three quarter flat. I want a 16 flat. Okay, so I've got a 16 flat here. I do need some floating medium as well. There we go. There we go. Okay, so. So I'm going to go ahead and double load my um, 16 flat with. Oh, let's let's get coffee latte and burnt dumper. Okay. There's lots of different things that baskets are made out of. Um, these days, especially there's all kinds of things from tree bark to um, wicker and different things like that. So my mother was a basket collector from a long time ago. I'm going to add some wicker white with the coffee latte just to lighten it up slightly. Okay. All right. So we've got a good load on our 16 flat. Sorry if that was a little blurry while I was doing it. Let's come down here. There we go. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is kind of create the structure of your basket. So what shape is your basket going to take? Okay. So I'm going to just do a basic basket shape. So we're going to have a bottom right here. Okay, and we're going to curve up on this side and this side. There we go. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect, so I don't worry too much about exact. Now you want to create the vertical um, ribs, bones, whatever you want to call these um, of the basket. And first, and then you start to weave in between. Okay. So it's a good idea to do your spacing. I don't like to put one right dead center personally, but you could. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and so I didn't space that very good. Did I? Let's move this one over. It's all good. All right. So this is what we do. We're going to come in here. So we've got our weaves. This is the one I'm keeping. That's the one I'm not using. And we're going to go between the uprights. Okay. So on the flat of the brush, you're going to go from here and with pressure lay on the flat and stand up to the chisel when you reach the other side. Okay. 
and you're going to go on the other side and you're going to go all the way across to this one. All right, so looking at that, I should have pre-sketched this and thought this out. I'm going to put one right here in the middle. I said I wasn't going to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, and then we'll keep this one. Forgive me. Okay, so we're going to go from here all the way across to this right here. And you might have to go back, all right, with a slight downward curve. See that? And remember, there's no mistakes in one stroke painting. We go with the flow. So if you, oops, it's okay. You just stroke over it. And then you go across this one and you go, you skip one and go to the next. Can you see that? So I went from here to here. And then from here, I skipped this one and went to this one. From here, I skipped this one and went to this one. And then we finish here and stand to the chisel on the edge. Okay, so that's your first row. All right, now here comes the change up. You're going to do the opposite of what you did in the next row. Okay, so from here, you're going to start and you're going to go all the way to here and then from here all the way to here. Okay, so we're going to go from here, push and stand up and let me come back. You can work it back and forth or I can get a little bit of medium in my brush. Right and go right in there. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to come over and side load a little bit of white in the front. We want it a little bit lighter. Push and come over to this one. Okay. See that? Now you're leaving little gaps in between. And there's a couple of things you can do about that. And I'm going to show you. You can either have pre-base coated the whole basket and then do this. So I could have base coated underneath the whole thing brown, but I kind of like those little gaps. It just depends on what you're going to have in there. And sometimes it's fun to pull little bits of moss, um, greenery, whatever out of there. Okay. So see how I've done this right here and then here. So now we're ready to do the next one. We're going to repeat the first row here. Okay. So we're going to come here and do the next one. Okay. And then from here. So to answer your question, Sophie, the um, Donna's signature collection of brushes are our best option available for one stroke brushes. They are slightly better than the green handle brushes, but they all perform the green handles and the um, flower, the lavender handle ones all perform very well with one stroke. <laughs> you know, when your instructor says, whoops. <laughs> okay. And we're going to go across here. Oops. <laughs> I did it again. No, I didn't right here. Yep. I have to look back up to this row here to remember where I'm going. On paper, it's dry, so make sure you're picking up plenty of paint, guys. All right. Now, remember, I said I wanted a little bit lighter highlight stroke on the front. So I side load a little white and come back in here and stroke. That makes it a little bit lighter. There we go. Okay starts to get a little sticky on paper after a while. So if you need medium, go into medium and then push and stand up on that outside edge. All right. So you want to make sure you're coming to the chisel. You're starting and ending each stroke on the chisel. Okay. All right. Now we're going to repeat the second row here and we're going to come across and stand up. Okay. I just like saying whoops. I'm a northerner. We say whoops and we say oop. I saw that on a shirt one day and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so true. <laughs> oops, sorry. <laughs> I don't know where we get that from. 
It sounds kind of funny when it's written down. If I pass somebody or try to get around somebody, oops, excuse me. I don't know where that is. Okay, so come over here and stand up. Okay, so now we have a bottom to our basket. So <laughs> the smart thing would have been to <laughs> see, this is where I need Donna whispering in my ear. We would have, would have been to start it at the bottom and work your way up, right? So that's okay. We'll just create our own bottom. And there's a couple of different ways to finish off the bottom of the basket. And the one that I like to do is a little um, weave stroke here. And they're just little comma strokes. Okay, so you're gonna start over here on the chisel. You're gonna push and make a little comma and stand up. And then overlap that slightly, push and stand up. Push and stand up all the way over to this side and then reverse your brush and come in that direction. Okay. And you can do the same thing at the top to finish off the basket top right here. Push, stand up. Right. And you're just overlapping each of those strokes with the next one. There we go. Now to finish this off for the shape, there's a couple things you want to do. You want to come in with um, your chisel edge of your brush and pull down on each of these sections where you want the weave to show, the, the vertical weave to show. So you pull down here, pull down here. And then here. Now it would have been a better idea probably to reverse that. Because I want the light at the bottom. There we go. Right, so here here, 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 and there. Okay, so you're putting those segments back in. Now notice how you can kind of see some of those um, marks underneath and that's okay. But if it bothers you, you can come back over and restroke. That's just from the medium. Okay, the other thing that we like to do with baskets is add some depth and do some shading, okay? So what you can do in that respect is you can get your um, rake brush. <laughs> And you can use a couple of different things. If you want to um, get some burnt sienna, right? So you always, when you're loading a rake brush, you keep the water in it. You don't lay it on the paper towel like you do with our flats so that you can get a kind of a little bit of an inky texture on the chisel of this, uh, these bristles, right? Cause they're all kind of loose. And you can come right in here and sweep from where the vertical weave is out into the face of the horizontal. So you touch and pull it out. See that? You can do that with something like this, or you could come get a little of the burnt amber instead. 
right, and pull that out. I like the mix, actually, the burnt sienna with a little burnt umber. Okay. Let me get a little burnt umber here. There we go. Okay, so you would go and do that in all of those little grooves, pulling those out in both directions. Okay, thank you. So it doesn't look like much until you start adding some of these details that really make a difference. So here, you're only going to do, because it's half of the weave there, see that? So you're only going to do to the left on these short ones. I should have done it from here. There we go. And not from the edge. We're going to do something else to the edge. Okay. So pull that. I'm picking up burnt sienna and burnt umber. And every time I'm stroking, I'm using a little bit of an, an upward stroke like that. Okay, so this one would come. That way, this way, this way. Okay. All right. Now, so we have all that. We can come in. Let me wipe off my brush. Actually, let's clean that because I want some clean color here. You can come in with the yellow ochre. Okay. And you might sweep back and forth in here. Let's get a little bit of white with that. It happens, Patricia. All right, and you might sweep a little bit of a glare on these ones. So you go back and forth, see that? Sweep, sweep, left, right, left, right. And that's creating a little bit of a shine or a glare on those weaves. And you might do those only in the ones that are facing, like up here, and in the front, maybe you don't do them over on the sides because you wouldn't necessarily have it positioned everything where the, the light's going to hit it, right? And that's a little bit too light, so let's darken that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so you could have fun and you could um, add a few different colors in there. And then to finish this, like I was saying, with these um, these little gaps right in here, you could put little bits of moss or if they bother you and you want to seal them up I'm going to show you what else you can do so I'm going to load my 16 here can a person do a basket weave with the vertical be the same width as a horizontal weave I've never seen a basket like that but you certainly could um, I suppose there's baskets out there somewhere. I just have not seen them where the the uh, vertical weave is as wide as. Usually it's a stiffer, um, thinner material. Okay, so I've side loaded, I've loaded my 16 flat with floating medium and then side loaded burnt umber, all right? And you can come in here um, in between where we have these gaps and you can fill those with the burnt umber as a shading process. You go right all the way across actually with the sh um, burnt umber down and it would fill in those holes and shade the bottom part of that weave and you would do that on all of these all the way across.
Okay, just to create a little more depth. You could leave it the way it was. That would be perfectly fine too. All right, let's see how I'm kind of filling those in and it's giving them a little bit of a background color now. So a little more medium. Okay. And then to finish it off, you can come along the edge. You want to make sure it's dry and I don't think I'm fully dry here, but we're going to do our best. So I think right there it's wet. There we go. So shade along that side there. It's going to make it look more round. Everything I'm doing is making it look more realistic, a little more round. So you go around this edge here and shade that off. And you might even come up underneath each of these weaves at the top. Okay. There you go. All right, and you could even come in here, right, and do a little more darkening over some of those indentations. It just makes everything stand out more. Okay, so the more you do, the more realistic it's going to look. And if you happen to accidentally go over some of those little pieces, then put them right back in again. Okay. All right, so there's your basket. Isn't that fun? So lots of other things you can do to it, but that's a really good start. All right, so let's take a look at flowers, all right, and doing some flower petal strokes for the oversize. It's kind of tough to do on paper, but I'm going to give it a shot, okay? All right, so I've got some white out here, and I don't need to put any more. I've got, I'm going to put out some dioxazine purple. Okay, and I've got some violet pansy as well. Thank you guys. I'm, hope, I'm glad you like that. Okay. And I think that was all I needed. All right. I'm going to show you a petal and a leaf as well. Okay. So I'm going to put out some sap green. <laughs> well, we can't do everything, can we, Patty? <laughs> Sometimes we're just not meant to weave baskets. Okay, so I've got a three-quarter flat, and I'm going to sketch this out first so you can kind of get a feel for what it is I'm doing. So consider doing oversized um, paintings, right? And we're doing a large petal. So I'm going to just create the look of a large petal here. And this will be the center of my flower right here, okay? And so we've got this petal, and maybe it's got a little bit of a turn right there on the petal. All right, so that was a sketch, and I'm going to make this a little darker so you guys can see it. There we go. And it's coming, everything comes from the center out. When we normally stroke flower petals, we double load right? So in this case, it would be dioxazine purple, wicker white. I'm going to put just a touch of yellow ochre in there so you can see it against the white background, right? So we double load and we come in here and we do, let me get plenty of white, wiggles, right? So we would come all the way out and all the way back in, right? And you can come at an angle, push it out, 
all the way around and that's that's about as big as you could get the pedal with a three quarter inch flat so how do we get a pedal this size out of um, this size brush okay so this is what you do I'm going to wipe this off and we're going to start with um, a bunch of dioxazine purple I'm just going to pick it up here and from this flower center so let's come down so from the center of the flower you're going to come right in here and you're going to push and pull it out in streaks okay and then the center is going to go out further than the sides so you're going to create this dark center like that okay all that purple All right, then you're going to clean your brush. And I'm going to pick up all white. Okay. And I'm going to come out here to my edge. And I'm just going to lay this white out on the edge for a little bit as much as I can work with all right so you're taking it out here to the edge then you're going to push really hard and sweep in and as you do sometimes it might pick up that wet purple paint in my case because I'm on paper it's not picking up a darn thing but if it did you would have to wipe off any purple that you picked up and then come back and get fresh white so I'm going to get more white I'm going to come right in here push really hard at the edge and pull it in sweeping over the edge of that dark purple that I just put in there okay more white come out to the edge you get a nice rounded shape if you push really hard here the edge of my bristles and my brush are pushing out and then I'm going to pull it in just like that okay so you can come out here and pull in more and come here and pull in this way all right we're not done we're going to come around the edge here pick up more white we're going to push it here and pull it in push and pull push and pull okay so now you've got all this white and you've got all this purple but you've got a nice dark center and that's what we wanted to have because with all this white um, it's hard to get the dark center once you've got it in there so now I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to come and pick up the um, violet pansy because I've got all this wet white in here so violet pansy on my brush and I'm going to sweep back and forth into that white on the edge One more violet pansy and you see how it's getting turning kind of a lavender color okay so now with that white paint or wet paint I should say I can pull out some streaks this way this way this way all right wipe off your brush come and get more dioxazine purple and pull it out more purple pull it out now what happens is you're going to pick up some of that wet paint and it's going to come back in here in streaks so again if that happens you wipe off your brush you come get fresh purple you come in here push and pull it out but give it a nice pull so that it goes out and gets into those streaks okay so can you see that so now we've got about three or four colors going here wipe off your brush of any white that you picked up pick up more purple and pull it out okay so you can work this process all right you can go out and in and pick up some of that violet pansy and work the two colors together okay so you're getting this really pretty blend of those two shades of purple wipe off your brush now you can come get white on this dirty purple brush okay and watch what happens I'm going to come right out here and I'm going to get really pretty streaks of purple stand to the chisel pull it down so I pick up that dirty purple on my brush 
that wet purple, wipe it off, come get white, come out here, okay, and you can just have a lot of fun creating lots of different looks of colors with these light and dark shades, okay. Pick up fresh white. Now what's important is when you've, I'm wiping off my brush because I just picked up a whole bunch of purple. What's important is when you're stroking that you think about the flow of the petal, okay? So right from here might be where it's bending over and flowing this way and that way. Okay, so you want to think that it's not all straight. You would come to a rounded edge here. Get some fresh white. There we go. Rounded edge here and then pull it down. All right, here and pull it in. So you're pulling it in a curve from the right-hand side curve, from the left-hand side curve. Maybe you do some chisel strokes and come all the way in, all right, and create um, some streaks of color, okay? What amount of pressure are you using? Heavy pressure when you're doing it the first time. As you're laying on this fresh white, it's about half, right? So um, about half the flat is laying down. Okay, so it's lighter. Chisel coming in gives you those pretty streaks. See that? Pick up a lot of white and you can just lay it right in there and get a highlight. So very little pressure on this, just the corner of my brush laying it in there. So you're getting all these shades and highlights and different looks in here with the same brush that we use for this one with a lot more interesting stroke look. Okay. Now, Wipe off the brush a last time. Come and get some of this dioxazine and, oops, wipe it off better than that. Okay, dioxazine, come in here and do some chisel strokes in. See there, come out and back, out and back. and then a few smooth strokes on the flat. You can have some really cool looking petals when you do this. Go from the flat, twist the brush in your fingers and get some chisel pulls up in there, okay? So lots of fun, different strokes for different folks. And put some of that diox or uh, violet pansy back in there if you want to. So really pretty chance to play with some different colors. Okay. Now the part that was folded over. How do we do that? We're going to come in. Let's wipe this brush off, and we're going to come and get our double load. So we're going to come back to our white and dioxazine purple. Okay, and with this, you need a nice crisp edge of white on one side. Well, so Patty, that's a, a good point. And the thing is with these types of designs, you have to be okay with streaky colors because it looks nicer when you leave it alone instead of work it over, over and over into one color. Okay, so yeah, that could be a challenge, but you could work on it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come on the chisel edge along the edge of the petal. Let me come down here so you can see this a little better. There we go. So along the chisel edge, and I'm leading with my dark color, which will be my background color, and I'm going to push down so my white goes down, and then I'm going to stand back up to the chisel and come back out to the outside edge. Okay, so I want a little more white with that and not quite so heavy purple. I'm going to restroke this so you can see it a little better. Come from here, 
push it down, stand it up, come back to the chisel. There we go. Okay, so you can get a really pretty look with a flipped or rolled um, petal right in there. Right there, and then you can come along this way. It looks pretty if you do it here. That's another place to do it, right? But leave those pretty streaks of color. Don't work them all into one color. Right, you can come along here, lean it in, stand it back up, down to the chisel. So lots of fun stuff you can do with that. Now let me show you with a leaf. Okay. It's really important when you're doing something like this size that you sketch it out ahead of time so you know where you're going and how big your petals are and what you're going to do with it. Okay. All right, so let's look at some leaf colors. I've got some sap and citrus here, just our basics. Okay. Same size brush. Let me get a little bit of white on that citrus. Okay. All right, so what you want to do with a leaf, right, instead of having to try and wiggle with a small brush and make it look big. So let's get our leaf um, stem here. And our leaf is going to come out here and come to this point. Okay. And so what you want to do in this case is you're going to take your brush at this angle to the stem. Stem's going this way, leaf's coming this way. You're going to touch it here, you're going to push it down, you're going to slide out to the edge and follow the edge as you curve it around. Okay. You're going to come right below that, do the same thing and come down. So every time you're stroking, you're coming down, coming down, coming down. And everything comes from the center stem, right? So, and you're changing the angle. The angle started here, then it came in a little more here. Now it's more severe to the outside. And then you finally finish it up on the chisel like that. Okay. Other side, you're going to do the same thing here, then here, then here, and then down to the chisel. I might run out of paper here, but let's see. So we're going to sweep it out. If you get a dry edge, you need more paint, more paint. There we go. So you're going to sweep it out, then more severe angle, sweep it out. So you're overlapping the first with the second stroke, more severe. Sweep it out. Overlap and then come to the chisel. Okay. And it looks pretty if you leave the outside edges a little rough. All right. And then we have this much bigger leaf. It is where I always always goof up to Leanne. And this is what I learned with this. If you, um, let's do it on the back of this sheet right here. If you look at the structure of the leaf, okay, so you have a stem here. Then, like I said, you're going to have, this is probably too long, but anyway, you're going to have your first stroke here with the dark to the outside and it's flat. And then you're going to come down and it's more of an angle and then down more of an angle and then down and then finally to here. Okay, so same thing here angle, angle, angle. Okay. And that really helped me to see the direction, right? You got to push like that, push. And every time you go to that outside edge, you're sweeping it down towards the tip. Push, push, see. push and then finish. So all those strokes create that leaf. I'm off camera. I'm sorry. I'll show you on the other side. Sorry. Oh, I thought I was on. All right. So here push, right? See how I'm coming around and I'm coming towards that point. 
Y'all are giving me directions. Thank you. <laughs> All right, push, push, push. Right, and it looks pretty when it's streaky, when it's got a little dry on the edge. If you have it perfect, perfect, it does sometimes it just doesn't look as pretty. That was hard for me to see them. If I make it exactly with no dry edges, then it didn't look as nice because it needed to look looser. See there and there. Okay. Then you can come pull your stem in and that cleans up all the ookies. All right, so big leaves, big petals, easy to do if you break them down into strokes and layers of color, okay? All right, guys, so let's come back to, thanks for watching and giving me directions. I'm sorry I was off on that one. So let's come back to our facing camera. There we go. All right, well, thank you guys again for joining me.